On November 4th, don't forget, vote yes on propositions. Paid for by a Mr. Smith. It was quite a series, let me tell you. In the first game, the Mets went with their ace right-hander, Darling, and the Bo Sox countered with their big southpaw Hurst. Oh, the Red Sox loaded their lineup with lefties, but it didn't matter. If it wasn't for that stupid Aaron Bartoffel at second base, they might still be playing. Then, in game two, it was good against Clemens. And once again, the Mets' bats were silent. The ball was moving all over the place. They couldn't touch Clemens. Oh, but anyway, the Mets took two out of three. Game. Back in the Big Apple, Mookie Wilson hits a grounder down to Buckner in the crucial 10th inning of the sixth game, and you wouldn't believe it, it goes right to his legs. And then, in the seventh game, those amazing Mets come back and win it all. Amazing. General Motors' announcement that it was pulling out of South Africa has sent shockwaves throughout the world. Clearly, it was moral outrage at apartheid that brought about the move. Here is GM Chairman Roger Smith's explanation. Economic recession in South Africa has made operating there increasingly difficult. Well, um, we were mistaken. Someone told us it was moral outrage, but, um, well, that information was incorrect, and we are sorry. Now this. <laughs> Wild card. Anything comes. Yeah. Oh, come, come on, guys. No, 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 no. Stallone, the board game. In our last episode of Star Wars, disarmament negotiations in Iceland between Commander in Chief Ron Fencewalker and his arch enemy Count Gorbachev collapsed. Each cursing the other, they return to their native lands. The free men set to work on a particle beam destructor ray, while the Supreme Soviet ordered deployment of its new super weapon, codenamed Death Star. Stay tuned to the news for the final confrontation in the Star Wars saga. The evil empire strikes back. The Forbes magazine list of the 400 wealthiest Americans was released recently. Malcolm Forbes, the magazine's publisher, was on the list, as was industrialist Armin Hammer, show business personality Merv Griffin, and publisher Bob Guccione. Coincidentally, Poor House Quarterly issued its list of the 400 poorest Americans. Among them was Gustav Q. Barleycorn, Joseph T. Pennybender, and Walter F. Mondale. And Frank Sinatra, angered by the way he's depicted in Kitty Kelly's unauthorized biography, has taken his anger out on every person who has read the book. 
So far, over two and a half million readers of the bestseller have been hospitalized. Now this. You loved her as a candidate. You loved her as a Pepsi pitch woman. You loved her husband as an honest businessman. And you loved her son as an accused cocaine-dealing college student. So we're sure you'll love her new breakfast cereal, Ferraro's. Ferraro's, full of holes. Find out all the election results before the elections even begin. Swami Bung Dock reports from NNT and Election Central. A longtime political figure bid goodbye to Washington this month as Tip O'Neill retired from the House of Representatives. I live with a clean conscience and a smile on my face because I'm happy that America is the greatest nation in the history of the world. Admirers showered praise on the outgoing speaker. He's not self-important or self-righteous. He's an amazing man. He deserves our private thing and a private round of applause because he is special. He's just a big, happy, fat guy. And comedian Chevy Chase checked out of the Betty Ford Center for drug and alcohol abuse after a two and a half week stay. Although Chase went there for help, the former first lady also learned a lot from his visit. And finally, in Washington today, um, first, uh, if I may, I'd like to read uh, a letter uh, from uh, the President of the United States. I'm very happy to learn of the corporate commitment of ABC and PBS to the struggle against illiteracy in our country. They have my commendation and my thanks. Illiteracy has been called America's hidden problem. practically just met, I feel like I've known you forever, you know? I know, I, I have the same feeling about you. Most of the people I meet in here are so phony, so... So, so shallow and superficial. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But with you, it's different. I feel like I can really let my hair down. Yeah, like we can be honest and devoid of pretense. Sharing our two selves. That's why I, uh, I have a confession to make. I'm not really Sylvester Stallone's standing. I sell paper cups. Oh, my God. You're not mad? No. I think it's wonderful that you can be so real and open. Besides, I lied about my job, too. You don't design dresses for Pierre Cardin? <laughs> no. I'm a secretary at Kmart. Oh, God. <laughs> this is terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're communicating. Yeah, I and mean, we're proving that two people can, uh, well, can... Listen, mm -hmm. I have another confession to make. Oh. This isn't my real hair. I wear a toupee. <gasps> Mine's ratty brown. I wear a wig. This mustache? It's glued on. I can't grow one. Oh, well, I can, but I cover it up with makeup. I have chronic colitis. I wear padded bras. I stuff a sock in my shorts. I'm a bedwetter. I think all women are sleazy tarts, and I really want to sleep with my mother. I despise men. I just want the security. I'm frigid. God, this is fantastic. Yes, yes. I mean, we're breaking down barriers. No shams, no deceptions. Just... Honesty. 
Excuse me. That slide's a real card, yeah, you know? Yeah, card damn sure. Still left this alone, I'm a Yo, Adrian. Really? Yeah, I told you. Coming up, gravity problems. <laughs> and now to introduce a new feature segment, Whatever Happened To, here's Steve Casper. Everyone remembers the bald and brawny Mr. Clean, the man who could chase away dirt with one stroke of his mop. Well, we haven't seen Mr. Clean recently, so we thought we'd chase him down here at his home. Mr. Clean, Steve Casper. Oh, hello, Mr. Casper. Come in, won't you? Oh, thank you. Make, oh, I'm sorry. Please, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Clean, when can we expect to see you back behind the mop on TV? Well, it's been nine years knocking on doors, trying to call in old favors. I've been to Procter & Gamble, Kleenex, Ultra Bright. Any luck? I think I've been typecast. There is one ray of hope, though. Oh? This lottery thing's really looking up. I only missed by three. I give you money for groceries and you come back with lottery tickets. I'm getting my bag right now. We're going back to the supermarket. And who the hell is this? That was my lovely wife, Mrs. Clean. I really think I'd better be going now. Well, uh, that's about all for now. Mr. Casper, if yeah. you hear of anything, I'm still available. <laughs> of course. I get rid of scum and bathroom grease in just a second. If you're partial to koalas and keen on kangaroos, there's just one place for you, mate. Down under, in the land of wonder. Good day, mate. Good day, love. In Aussie land, there's lots to do. They could jog around the outback with an umbrella if you like, or come to the camel race and try and pick a winner. We've got miles and miles of beaches, crystal clear blue waters to swim in. You can catch a giant whale or a giant fish. We got lots of both. Let it go, mate. We're a pretty wild lot down there. We'll throw another platypus on the barbie. Drink up a few of these beers. It's easy to get to Australia. Just take a right at New Zealand. I touched the New York Times and my hands are filthy. I read the Wall Street Journal. And now I have to wash up. I just picked up the LA Weekly. Now I need a shower. There's another studio. TV news. This morning. It melts in your mind, not in your hands. Good evening. I'm Pete Kimmelman with News Brief. In Washington last week, a huge dinner was held for the Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, who is retiring after a half century in politics. Insiders confess that his retirement may be overdue, saying that his mental faculties are not what they used to be. Do you know me? Do you know me? And embarrassed by the disinformation scandal, the administration is adding a new warning to all future press releases. I hope that's true. Meanwhile, in Harper's Ferry this week, there was great excitement when the Just Say No kids welcomed to town their favorite superheroes, including Flash Gordon, Mr. Mighty, Super Cop, and Plastic Woman. Yay, Plastic Woman! And finally, in England today, the House of Lords staged an unusual filibuster, which has been going on now for the past 24 hours. There is no end in sight. How about this or this? Oh, this one. This uh -huh. or this? Uh, uh, no, uh, not you. All right. Uh, oh, here we go. 
this. Uh-huh. Or this. Oh. To the surprise of just about everyone, incumbent Alphonse D'Amato dropped out of the New York Senate race at the last minute, citing his own lack of honesty as the reason. Would you buy a car if I were to try to sell it to you? I don't think so. D'Amato's major backer, John DeLorean, had his own reasons. I don't know, would you buy a used car from me? The two will open a DeSoto dealership in the near future. Now this. On the next Hey Maggie, everybody's favorite Iron Lady gets a visit from the Milkman, played by Stuart Pankin. Morning, Mom. The sheep's in the meadow and the cow's in the bowl. <laughs> and guess who's complaining again? There's absolutely no way in which you could eat in here. There's no place where you can get a, uh, a small table in. Oh, that's all right, Mom. I can't stay long. Me cow double bar. <laughs> Long for a really lovely kitchen, which I've never really had one. Go straight out onto a patio. Oh, that would be beautiful, Mum. You could gaze at the moon till the cows come home. That's all on the next Hey Maggie. Consult your local listings for the time in your area. Hey Maggie, how about another cow? From the start, Adlai Stevenson's gubernatorial campaign in Illinois has been plagued by bad luck. First, LaRouche candidates defeated his running mates in the primary, and then while campaigning against Governor Jim Thompson, he fell off his horse and broke his foot. Next, a day spent with Teamsters ended in disaster. Meanwhile, his luggage that had been missing for weeks at O'Hare was finally recovered. But not soon enough. True to form, Stevenson put the best face on the campaign mishaps. We've been through hell. We've, we've been through a very hard campaign. And later, we'll have film from inside the first nuclear power plant to open since the disaster at Chernobyl. Now this. Nine months ago, Ann and Jeff were a young couple just starting out. Times were tough. Ann was pregnant, and Jeff had just been fired from his job. But they were able to buy this house. How? Not with a loan from an ordinary finance company. Finance companies can be cold, caring only about the bottom line. So where did they get the money? From us. Firstborn finance. Because you really don't own them anyway. Can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye. Was Eugene Hossenfuss working for the CIA? Was the plane load of arms and supplies shot down in Nicaragua part of an illegal CIA operation? No, says the administration. The entire operation was perfectly legal and directed from inside the White House by one of Nancy Reagan's maids. <laughs> and rounding out the news, people of Earth were visited by King Neptune this week, who with his able band of submariners arrived in the spirit of peace and friendship. A key to the underwater kingdom was then presented to the surface peoples, for which we're all very grateful. You've seen Killmaster, Sadducks, Blood Truckers, Rigor Mortis Knight, Death Fiend 1000, Amputee Vacation, Intestines Trap, Murder Saloon. Serial killer suit. And I crave your guts. Now see. Beyond guts, beyond gore, beyond gross. It's the attack of green death slime with engorged veins from hell's sewage system on your child, your mother, your puppy, and finally your own brain. Coming here next month. And now please enjoy our feature presentation. Hey, kids, it's Saturday morning. Time for Saturday Morning News with Uncle Flubby. And now, here's Uncle Flubby. Hiya, kids. Oh, today we're going to be visiting with Pete Parrott in Pittsburgh, Ernie Panda in Washington, D.C., and we're going to catch up with Mickey Mouse 
on his worldwide goodwill tour. But first, let's go to Pete Parrott with the president in Pittsburgh. Ooh, that's a lot of P words, isn't it? Come in, Pete. What? I'm Pete Parrott, and I'm here with the Reagans in the crowded bar, and I'm loaded. Whoa! Hey, Grant, hold me up. I gotta talk to the camera over there. <laughs> you see, right over there. Okay. Like I say, I'm Pete Parrott, and I'm here with the president and lots of his rich friends. In fact, I've never seen so many fat cats in my life. <laughs> now, let me ask you, Your Highness, how much would you say that ring you're wearing cost? You have any idea? Was it a gift? Maybe this guy can tell us something. Hey, Mr. President, let me ask you a very personal, top secret question. How come you're still using that crazy kid stuff? <laughs> but seriously, folks, we gotta cut back to the studio. Let me thank President Reagan and his lovely First Lady Nancy for this exclusive interview. And on behalf of Uncle Fluffy and the entire Saturday morning news staff, thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Pete. And in other news, Earlier this week, we got a preview of Disney's first adult theme park opening soon near Paris, France. This is what it looked like. <laughs> of course, there'll be no kids allowed. You be sure and tell your folks about it. Hey, and speaking of Disney, Mickey Mouse, who was in India last week, has now arrived in China. His first stop was the Great Wall. And later in the week, he will eat with Chairman Deng Xiaoping as part of a cultural exchange program. And now, let's go to Ernie Panda in our nation's capital. Ernie? Hey, Ernie, for God's sakes! Well, uh, we'll have to get back to Ernie later. But right now, let's go to a commercial, and when we come back, we'll have a sports report from Charlie Chicken with Ted Turner, owner of the Atlanta Braves. Coming up, an international polo championship is won by Syria. Now this. Hi, I'm Rich Hall. You know, grocery shopping doesn't have to be a mundane experience. It can be educational. You could come home with some enriched bread and an enriched vocabulary. Let's study some supermarket sniglets. The slight hesitation one takes for his own safety when approaching an electric door is called the porta pause. <laughs> a nebulant is any product whose ingredients list features the phrase, contains one or more of the following, as if the manufacturers themselves aren't sure what goes in the stomach. The small window through which you view spaghetti and pasta is the noodlium. <laughs> Those lush photographs and thoughtful serving suggestions offered up by frozen dinner manufacturers in an attempt to make the foods look more palatable are called pucatorials. That's a dollar seventy-nine. Any person who holds up the entire line while he writes a check for three items... Is it the first or second? I can't remember. The third! ...is a chirp. Oh, yeah, I've got coupons. Oh, the first person to discover a newly opened checkout lane is a register roach. The act of having the checker embarrass you in front of the entire supermarket. Frank, can I have a price check on the giant can of Cruex? It's uh, a junk itch powder. Is called amplifliction.
I sure in hell hated to see that end. 